one year ago, the unimaginable, the unexpected, the unforgettable. This was 100% preventable. A freight train with toxic cargo goes off the rails. Now on Scripps News reports, East Palestine, Ohio. They tell you one thing, everything's safe, everything's fine, but we're seeing another thing. And I was here right after it happened. What life is like here now, and the lesson for all of America. This used to be a city. Now it's the, uh, I call it the ghost town of East Palestine. This is Scripps News reports, derailed. East Palestine, one year later. It's a matter of life and death. I don't see a choice that I have to, to, to leave. February 3rd, 2023 lives in the hearts, minds, and souls of the people of East Palestine. A Norfolk Southern train carrying toxic chemicals derailed near the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. The fire massive with towering thick smoke. First responders knocked on doors in a one mile radius to get people out. We're some of the last holdouts though on Alice Street. Just days after the derailment, Incident Command decided to move forward with a controlled vent and burn of vinyl chloride from five rail cars to avoid a potential catastrophic explosion. The National Guard blocked off roads leading to town. Governor Mike DeWine called it a matter of life or death. Need to leave. You just need to leave. The mandatory evacuation order was lifted after only three days. The governor's office said air quality samples showed safe readings and Norfolk Southern started running trains again. But the stress, frustration and mistrust carried on. I don't know what the future holds. Can you tell us how far the scope will be just beyond this one mile? Just quickly, people want to know. If it's the derailment killed tens of thousands of fish in the creeks. People lived scared. We should not have been let back into town. Scared to breathe the air and drink the water, even after the EPA chief and Governor DeWine took a sip from the tap, telling people the village water is safe. Our first ever community survey showed people don't believe it. I won't. I, we go get bottled water all the time. Families demanded independent testing on their private wells, bombarding a Youngstown lab with orders. We're at about 200 right now just from East Palestine. In the aftermath, the small village became a big stage for politicians. Senators Sherrod Brown, J.D. Vance, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, and former President Donald Trump. What this community needs now are not excuses and uh, all of the other things you've been hearing, but answers and results. Businesses struggled to stay afloat. Customers worried about their health. Everybody know, you know, this is a disaster area and uh, they do not feel secure to do business with us in the future. Norfolk Southern pledged to make things right. Norfolk Southern is committed to doing what's right. And each and every day, we're going to do the next right thing. The railroad removed contaminated soil and water by the truckloads and pumped millions into the community. 20 days after the derailment, the NTSB released its preliminary findings, noting surveillance video showed a wheel bearing overheating before the disaster. This was 100% preventable. The NTSB held a rare field hearing in East Palestine. Witness testimony focused on communication and first response preparedness and what happened. Last October, the EPA announced the completion of a major cleanup. Norfolk Southern removed the last of the contaminated dirt. The science is what it is. You, you trust the science. I honestly don't think that I'm going to have an issue right now. We don't know what we're in for for the long haul, and I, I don't feel like it's good things. Restoration would begin while testing to ensure health and safety continues. Let's pick up on that thread of what Norfolk Southern is doing now. Sure, there's cleanup and rebuilding, but there's also new technology to help prevent something like this from happening again. We got a rare firsthand look. It is a very large scene. What was a disaster site <laughs> is now a construction zone. This is the start of the restoration phase. Rocks by the truckload brought in and dumped in a massive hole, just yards from where a toxic train derailed last February 3rd. But if you bring me back to here, and I was here right after it happened, the landmarks of where the incident happened, they're gone. Chris Hunsaker oversees environmental operations for Norfolk Southern. 
The railroad announced last October the last of the contaminated dirt was removed. We've done our digging and we've got confirmation that we've reached, you know, clean levels. But not all is said and done. Sampling and testing will run through April. That's kind of our double check. So what would you be looking for beyond what was on the train? Really, it's just making sure was there any other components that, uh, you know, as part of, you know, combustion that happened during the fire, uh, something like that that, you know, just might have been missed. But Hunsaker stands by their work. With the investigation and the soil removal we've done out here, we feel very confident we've got it all. But what about the creeks? People in the village and surrounding communities have been critical of a chemical smell and a sheen. My biggest thing is they tell you one thing, everything's safe, everything's fine but we're seeing another thing. Last October, the federal EPA ordered Norfolk Southern to do more cleanup and sheen investigations. Hunsaker says they're waiting on approval on a proposed plan. We've seen sheens in the creek, in the streams. We've been doing that investigation to figure out, you know, what they're associated with. News 5 investigators surveyed people right after the derailment and at the six month mark about the Norfolk Southern response. The community's dissatisfaction with the response softened slightly over time. I think that they're falling short. They trying, but you know, that's what I'm saying. This is a bigger job than what they're looking at. Norfolk Southern has pumped more than $100 million into the village, park renovations, and a regional safety training center at $25 million apiece. The railroad also sampled more than 1,200 private wells. And this, from a safe distance, our camera captured new technology on the rails. Norfolk Southern's digital train inspection portal, complete with stadium lights, high def cameras and sensors. The portal stands about 20 minutes west of East Palestine. The train inspection portal takes thousands of pictures to look for anomalies, but also tracks the speed of trains. The railroad hasn't said how much it cost, but it's the first one ever built by Norfolk Southern. It came online last October. A railroad spokesman says it's not a replacement for hot box detectors, but an additional layer of inspection. More than a dozen will be installed by the end of the year, specifically in high traffic areas. Where the cars were wrecked. Back at the restoration site off East Tagger. We've come a long way. We still have a, you know, a lot of work to do. Make sure we get it out and get everything right. If this was your home, would you feel safe with your family living here after what happened? I would absolutely feel safe where I would be here. In the immediate aftermath of this derailment, Congress promised to take a tough look at regulations, imposing new ones where needed. So what happened? That part of the story, as residents ask, is the water here safe? Next. Back here in East Palestine, a place we've come back to over and over in the last year, I've kept in touch with people like Christina Ferguson, who's called East Palestine her home since childhood. But today, she still hasn't come back to live, and she's not sure if she ever will. Christina Ferguson turns the key to a life lost in time. It doesn't feel like home anymore. A home once well lived. Everything left the way it was one year ago, now covered in grime. To hear a sound of the train when you're in that house just brings you right back to that moment. I first met Ferguson two weeks after the Norfolk Southern train derailment and chemical burn. Wiping and cleaning from a hazmat crew, not a fire restoration. I have gases from that creek in my home. The EPA administrator toured her house that sits along a creek in the heart of East Palestine, a creek that needed remediation for toxic chemicals from the derailment. February 3rd. It's been a long February 3rd. I don't even call it a year. Why not? Still stuck in that day. Ferguson says the house was never cleaned after the spill. The cleaning that they offered was more of like a dusting. It wasn't what I needed. She's also waiting to see what Norfolk Southern plans to do with the house she grew up in. I never dreamt that we would still be waiting. Ferguson had to take a new job. She went from living in a hotel with her elderly mother and stepfather who has dementia 
to this rental home 10 miles away. I sat down with her at the six month mark. It's a beautiful home, it is. It's just not my home. Ferguson says her stepfather now knows his way around, which to her is bittersweet. Now that home is starting to feel like home and we'll have to leave again. Ferguson says Norfolk Southern has been paying the rent and the railroad extended the lease through May after it deemed her family a special circumstance. Back in East Palestine, Ferguson stopped by to check on things. This season, the pipes. You've got to leave them on a little bit of a drip. She doesn't stay longer than a few minutes, she says, for her health. Careful. Ohio opened a permanent health clinic in the village, but Ferguson has sought independent medical testing. I try not to be in there long. I still get the burning in the eyes, nose, um, still get that taste in my mouth. Ferguson says the house on East Rebecca Street can't be saved. I'm waiting for Norfolk Southern to come up with something. Norfolk Southern says there's been no recommendation to tear down any homes and the offer stands to clean homes for people who want to come back. Are you able to look maybe five, ten years down the road? I hope that I have my family and my health and I hope that we're in a home that we don't have to leave. Ferguson says she just wants closure so her family can heal. I'm tired. I just want, this. I want it to be over. I just want it to be over, a statement everyone here can certainly relate to. In the weeks and months after the derailment, Congress promised to strengthen federal law. There was a bipartisan push. So what happened? Nathaniel Reed reports. On Capitol Hill, the accident prompted swift congressional reaction. What we have to do is figure out, are we shortchanging infrastructure investment? This is an issue across the board in aviation, in transportation, here at Thrill. We're not going to take profits over safety investments. A bipartisan group of senators, including Ohio Republican J.D. Vance and Democrat Sherrod Brown, found common ground, swiftly crafting the Bipartisan Railway Safety Act of 2023 a bill aimed at correcting key missteps that led up to the derailment, including revamped train and rail inspection procedures, as well as expanding the definition of hazardous materials to fall under stricter safety protocols. The bill cleared a key Senate committee last spring, but one year later, and the bill has never come up for a vote. Scripps News asked both of Ohio senators why. Uh, I do think we're going to vote on this thing. I just think that sometimes in Washington, especially when your party isn't in control, things don't go as quickly as you might like them to. Vance says it's mostly Senate Democrats and Majority Leader Chuck Schumer who are to blame for the stalled bill. Make no mistake, the derailment, the derailment was preventable. Brown told Scripps News he believes that rail lobbyists are chiefly to blame for the holdup. Well, it's stalled, but we're going we're gonna to rehabilitate. Uh, the problem has been the power of the railroads. The railroads, it's what people hate about Washington, the railroads have too much power, they have forever. They have had their way far too often with Congress and all too often with the regula regulators. Before the new year, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said that passing rail safety reform will be a key priority in 2024. But amid a busy election year, an ongoing debate over long past due bills to fund the U.S. government, it remains an open question whether any legislation to respond to what happened in East Palestine will be signed into law anytime soon even as President Biden plans to visit the site one year on. Nathaniel Reed, Scripps News, Capitol Hill. Ahead, the question on just about everyone's mind here, and it's probably what you're wondering too. Soon after that Norfolk Southern train derailed here in East Palestine, Scripps News exposed how the company's executives received millions of dollars in cash after making its trains longer and taking other actions critics say made the trains more dangerous. Gone now is a controversial financial target that had been the biggest driver of those cash awards. Instead, Norfolk Southern tells us the company now looks at metrics like on-time delivery, reportable injury rate, and reportable accident rate. This is a great credit to you and your investigation that we know about this now. 
Let's go back to the moments after that derailment for what became a life or death decision that had to be made in a matter of minutes. I recently sat down for a third time with the fire chief here. He says he stands by everything he did. February 3rd hasn't faded. It seemed to come up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Seems like yesterday. Not for East Palestine Fire Chief Keith Drabeck and his crew of volunteers. Like the world was on fire. That was night one. Rail cars carrying vinyl chloride became ticking time bombs. Fearing a violent catastrophic explosion, the decision was made to cut holes in the tanker, releasing the chemical and burning it creating a plume of smoke and sending toxins into the soil and creeks. Every decision we made was tough, but every decision we made throughout that process uh, was done under a consensus of all organizations here. Last May, Chief Drabick spoke candidly with me about the days, weeks, and months after the toxic derailment. He spelled out his frustrations in text messages obtained through a public records request. I truly feel defeated and useless. Chief Drabick says that came after criticism from Pennsylvania's governor not being notified about the decision to vent and burn vinyl chloride. Another text thread revealed the chief expressing frustration with a public health official, writing comparisons to handle exposure like for a regular house fire was beyond unacceptable. I don't look back at them. I, nothing that I had done from that point till now, there's nothing I would change. I own everything I did. I own everything any of my guys did. Uh, and, and I think everything went as well as it could have for what we had. Chief Drabig told me then the decision about the controlled burn was the most misunderstood part. He testified at a rare NTSB hearing last summer. He had 13 minutes as incident commander. If I was a fly in that room that day, mm -hmm. what would it have felt like? What would uh, I have witnessed? Very intense conversation. Um, there were, there were some heated moments of conversation. Chief Drabig called for better communication between the railroad and fire departments. Is that happening? Or? It, it, it is. They partner with a company called I Am Responding. If another incident occurs, that I Am Responding will send out notifications to those local departments um, immediately. Last summer, he also submitted his safety recommendations to the NTSB. Communication, paid staffing, and training that is easily accessible and affordable. But Drabik says he won't hear anything until the feds complete their investigation later this year. We are in the process of beginning to uh, draft uh, the final report. Communication, staffing, training, those were all big topics, um, things that I'm pushing for and still pushing for, and quite frankly, we'll always push for. When you go there and you look, and you were there when it happened. What are your thoughts? Norfolk is following through with cleaning it up and getting the town back to where it should be, um, as they should. Chief Dravik believes the village is heading in the right direction. And since the derailment, he's gained nine more firefighters. I would like to say that it's because it's brought attention um, with the derailment and, and what this department was able to do along with the other departments. But I think at the same time, it's just a, a, a part of wanting to help your community. What's not taken care of that you'd like to see done uh, faster? There's still a lot of unanswered questions, um, and, and there's going to be for, for some time. We end this half hour with a question on top of everyone's mind here. Is the water safe? A new year, a new season. Linda Murphy knew winter would be a struggle. Do you drink your well water? No. No, no. Your horses? Yes. The Murphys still drink bottled water, but winter brought an end to months of trucking in tanks of water for their horses. There's nothing that we can do to store enough water in these frigid temperatures. There's just no other option. We first met the Murphys four days after the toxic derailment. Linda Murphy called for ongoing testing. This could be long term for years and years. Murphy's fear mirrored what others felt closer to the derailment site. Last March, our first ever community survey showed 70% of people didn't think the water was safe. Governor DeWine said the city water system showed no contaminants and drank from the tap but the Ohio EPA recommended people with wells test their water. We moved here to retire and be safe. <laughs> I 
I did it. I did it. The Murphys live about three miles from where the toxic cargo left the tracks and up the road from one creek where she found dead fish. She says every so often she gets a whiff of an odd odor. This odor, this smell is exactly what I smell. So packaging tape, packaging tape. What are you still trying to get answers to? I don't think we're being told the truth on the amount of the contamination or the long term effects that it's going to have on us in the future. A year later, Ohio EPA director Ann Vogel says they're finding lube oil in the creeks, not vinyl chloride. Five tankers carried the hazardous chemical, another two spilled oil. Incident command decided to breach the cars and burn the toxins to avoid a catastrophic explosion. We don't see any chemical of concern that is at such levels that there would be a human health risk in the creeks. The Ohio EPA created a network of monitoring wells. Vogel says they'll know if contamination is leaching into groundwater. I want everybody to feel safe with their drinking water across the board. But Murphy isn't convinced through well testing her water is safe. I just feel that, you know, these chemicals are, they're, some of them will make their way eventually. And, you know, is it is it going to make its way to us? Murphy doesn't want to sell, but she's given heavy consideration to uprooting from a life here for more than two decades. I'm losing security. I'm losing happiness. I'm losing patience. This community's quest simply to live healthy lives should not be too much to ask. Getting this right won't just save this community, but one day, maybe yours too. For now, I'm Tara Morgan in East Palestine.